What is happening, ladies and gents? I'm your guy, Arrington Gavin, and you are tuning into the Arrington Gavin Show, your go-to spot for sharp insights, bold opinions, and unfiltered takes on the biggest stories of the day. Whether it's politics, pop culture, sports, or the latest buzz, we're deep. We're diving deep and keeping it real. So kick back, stay informed, and get ready to join the conversation. On today's show, guys, I'm so excited. I have my good friend, uh, Mr. Conrad Shezventer, host of the YouTube political YouTube show Shez Who, as well as my other good friend, Mr. Marcus Calabrese, political strategist, uh, founder of Imagine Capital Group. I'm very excited to have both of them on. Uh, we're going to talk everything politics, y'all. We have a huge election happening right now. I'm talking about the presidential election, as well as, you know, there's some big races happening in local states uh and, and as well as local cities so we'll talk a little bit about everything but right now it's all presidential race between uh vice president kamala harris and former president donald trump uh they've already selected their vps trump has jd vance current uh, u.s senator out of ohio and uh kamala harris vp harris has selected uh minnesota governor tim Walz. is getting real you know getting to the nitty-gritty Getting ready by the time this uh, episode will uh, you guys will check this out. Uh, they will be having their uh, Democratic National Convention held in Chicago, uh, which we will continue to follow up on our social media uh, page, which you need to follow, by the way, the Arrington Gavin show on Instagram. I truly appreciate that. Share it. Let everybody know. Um, as well as, of course, how they can tune into the program. The Arrington Gavin show airs every evening on all digital and streaming platforms, all uh, podcast platforms, wherever you get your podcast platform, as well as YouTube and Rumble. Our YouTube channel is R Smooth Club Media, the letter R, and then Smooth Club Media, as well as Rumble at the Arrington Gavin Show on Rumble. And you can also listen to our show weeknights at 11 p.m. on WDJY 99.1 FM out of Dallas, Georgia, as well as online at WDJYFM.com. So multiple ways you can tune into the program and uh, again, you know, you just just can, you know, tune into the conversation, man. So uh, before I move forward, I always have to acknowledge our proud supporters of the Arrington Gavin show. Like, let me get it right here. Like my good friends over at Ingenious Gin. That's right. Ingenious Gin is a black owned, veteran owned spirit. Uh, it is so smooth. It is so uh, unique in for one in color because most gins are clear. This one is a rose gold complexion. And look, I've always been a bourbon and whiskey guy. That is my preference. That's what I that's my go to. And so uh, uh, but they turn me into a gin lover and I'm like, wow, but it's the only gin I'll drink. And that's ingenious gin. Again, it is a veteran owned and black owned uh, spirit. So be sure for you gin connoisseurs and gin explorers out there. Go check that out at any of your local spirit stores or ABC stores, depending on which city you are in uh, or state. And for those who are watching, you can see the code that I have provided at the bottom. If you put this code uh, uh, in at checkout, if you go online at www.ingeniusgen.com, you can put that code in, you will receive 20% off your purchase. I'm not lying to you. You will receive 20% off your purchase at checkout. So, hey, that's that sounds like a hell of a deal to me. No. OK, well, then it's just me. <laughs> but uh, but make sure to check them out, support them as well, because here we support our veterans, especially uh, our minority owned business owners and veteran uh, business owners. Um, and make sure to drink responsibly. Please drink responsibly. Uh, also have to acknowledge too, Bernardo's menswear. That's right. My good friend, Mr. Bernardo Johnson keeps you looking swagged out from head to toe. Business casual, formal custom you name it he has all the fine threads you need to help uh sprucing up the uh the appearance uh you can check out his website online at www.bernardomenswear.com um or if you happen to be in the hampton roads virginia area stop by and see him in person at his store location uh in mcgother mall the first floor located in the heart of downtown norfolk let him know that errington sent you he will have the hookup for you and i'm telling you it's 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 dope. It's dope. His his shoes, accessories, uh, uh, suits, blazers, everything, man. It's just it's so spot on. And then lastly, because I'm making sure I do it on my uh, shots out before uh, I bring on my two uh, two buddies that we can talk politics. I have to acknowledge as well. Rugged Evolution Beer Care. Rugged is a new smooth is their slogan uh, with 17 scented beer bombs, beard oils, conditioning shampoos. It keeps you looking swagged out. 
uh, really, now I was going to say from head to toe, but guess what? They do have body wash, exfoliating soaps, everything you need to help take care of your external appearance, right? So all the fellas out there that are new to the beard community, new to the facial hair community, hey, look, you need to check out Rugged Evolution Beard Care, 17 scented beard oils and bombs. Awesome, awesome, awesome. They've been featured in Essence Magazine uh, a few times, as well as different publications. And you can check them out by going to their website, uh, ruggedevo.com. That's www.ruggedevo.com. So let's see what we're going to do now. We are going to do one. Uh, we're going to do a quick commercial break. When we come back, I'll bring on my guest uh, for the show again, Mr. Conrad Shezvenner, host of Shez Who, as well as political strategist Marcus Calabrese. We're going to be talking about politics, y'all. So don't go anywhere, my friends. And do me a favor. Do not change that dial. Order your beard care products with Rugged Evolution. We're your local beard care line that supports the maintenance of your full mature beard. Our line includes conditioning shampoos, moisturizers, balms, oils, shaving lotions, and exfoliating soaps. These products moisturize, hydrate, nourish, and have all the natural ingredients for a healthy beard. Log on to our website or download our app to place your orders. Become a man of distinction with Rugged Evolution Beard Care. And remember, Rugged is the new smooth. my friends welcome back welcome back to the Arrington gavin show i'm your host Arrington gavin and as you see for those who are watching joining me on the screen and for those who are listening look i'm joined by my guests for this evening and i'm uh, um, honored to have them on for the remainder of the program because we're gonna have some great conversations i have my good friend political strategist a uh, political strategist i can't get my words out political strategist mr marcus calabrese as well as my good friend mr conrad shez venter host of shez who be sure to t check his sh program out on youtube follow him right now and i'm telling you get some great interviews uh great uh uh, uh just great content as well so please do that for me my listeners uh guys fellas how's everybody doing today pretty good how are you man yeah. man i'm i'm doing good i'm hanging in there look staying busy uh like always but look more like i'm staying busy and engaged with this election man it is so much stuff happening and look i mean conrad the last time you were here on the uh program me myself and uh you and chris we, we were just talking about the how the tables have turned with this election right i mean it's like a, I think what was the analogy we use? Maybe like a NASCAR race or something. You know, yeah. it spins around, and then it's all of a sudden, boom, something happens, and now you see the adjustment, and it's just, it's, it's a huge, you know, change now. Now you see, uh, the Democrats really, uh, the momentum is really high for them at the moment, um, and the opposite for on the Republican ticket. Um, first things first, I want to, you know, kind of follow up with you both, and um, and Marcus, you can, uh, I'll start with you first. What's your take? on the vp picks from both sides we'll start off with uh jd vance uh or that's uh, jo uh donald trump's uh vp pick uh first i thought uh, one thank you for having me back i appreciate it mm -hmm. and conrad is both a political friend and and i look at him with more uh i, I would i would say more political affection than i do most other people I, i've almost uh <laughs> 
yeah, I think Conrad would, would attest. I, I've almost, I, I would trade blows over Conrad. Uh, he's one of the best people I know. So, um, so I'm, I'm really excited to be on, on here with him. Uh, as far as JD Vance, you know, at first I, I thought it, I was hoping it made sense, mm-hmm. you know, and then I looked at it some more and I talked to some other people. And Trump didn't need Ohio. Um, he should have picked Youngkin. Yes, I'm a Youngkin fan, but he should have picked Youngkin. Mm-hmm. But I thought, okay, maybe he picked uh, Vance because, you know, he's a Republican senator, obviously, and the governor of Ohio uh, is Republican. So maybe he feels like it doubles down and makes it easy. Maybe Youngkin would have been too much of a gamble, you know, with two U.S. senators from the Democratic Party. Virginia's more purple. He might not win it. So that's, you know, but then the more I looked at it, the more I heard he didn't need me. He's a, he was always going to win Ohio. So I'm wondering if he just picked him because he thought it, you know, it was his son's friend. I don't really see the gain in it, you know? Um, yeah, like it would have, I wish it made more sense. I thought it did at first, but, and now with, with, the way that I'm not, I'm not put off or necessarily surprised by the way Vance is talking. I mean, no one likes it. I'm not a JD Vance fan, but I think maybe to him, the only gain is one, it's his son's friend. And maybe he feels like with all the true things JD Vance has said about it before, maybe it's, it's a clarion call to anyone who didn't like Trump before or who doesn't like him now for them to accept the error of their ways and to come back. And now they can pledge all things Trump. Okay. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that's the only, that, that would make a, a modicum of sense to me. Okay. Okay. Hold that thought, Marcus. Um, Conrad, I want to ask you, what's your, what's your take on JD Vance? How, how, you know, what's your take on that pick? Or at least when he was picked, I knew I'm like, Hey, I know that thing, JD Vance, but, uh, you know, piggybacking on what Marcus said, Ohio has actually gone more and more red over the past uh, couple election cycles than what it was. It mm-hmm. used to be considered, um, you know, like Michigan is now a swing state, but now it's just a lot more red. And from what I have heard over the past uh, few weeks with his name being out there, they bring up the fact that when he ran for Senate, he actually did kind of worse than other Republicans, both in Ohio and nationwide then, you know, on a relative basis. And there has to be a reason why he might be performing worse if he's saying similar stuff to get the Republican vote out, which is largely just be very Mm pro-Trump. And even he has been very pro-Trump. But I think there's something about just him that exudes something that people don't like. And I would point out as someone who is very anti-Trump that J.D. used to be a particular anti-Trump voice Mm -hmm. now that that is something to be erased or something now that he's on this ticket maybe they were trying to think um yeah even if trump wins this is his last term so what do you do four years hence because he's a very young guy he's only Mm -hmm. like two years older than me and that is definitely someone you would want to invest if there's success then the following two terms on by being the leading republican candidate uh, but I don't even know if that would work out. I don't even know if he would run in four years if Trump loses, because um, there's just a likability factor that he has not either mastered or he never will. That's interesting. So I'm gonna play a little devil's advocate uh, against both both you guys because I I take it you both are no JD Vance fans, so neither am I. But I'll again try and play a little devil's advocate. Okay, him being young, him also being kind of a household name as far as his background right hillbilly elegy was a new york times bestseller his it was turned into a film that won you know major awards it, it was successful yes he was an ant he was an anti-trumper he was not a fan of him but i think we hear it a lot in elections that we you always want to try and grow the young voters right and sometimes the most engaged young voters is conservative vote is conservative voters young conservative voters i mean if you if you go to like you know your universities right which groups are larger the young uh dems or the young republicans i'm for me i feel i feel as though it's young conservatives that are like a good a, a larger number now i could be wrong again i don't go to each one but i'm just saying what i see 
uh, amongst like if I just brush by, you know, by a few or hear hear about their uh, uh, hear about it through social media. Um, I th- I think that JD is a new star in the conservative movement, and then on top of that, of course, you know, for Donald Trump, he was going to pick somebody that he can you know boss around like a you know like he's not going to have anybody that will steal his shine, but someone that can at least keep the momentum when he retires when he's you know long gone from politics because let's let's be honest when trump is you know god forbid if he wins or if he loses is MAGA gonna go away <laughs> like that's the thing like he's he's gained a huge party of its own in MAGA. the republican party is now the MAGA party that's why you see a lot of republicans either going independent or just speaking against uh trump so i i you know i i like i to, to add to what uh, Marcus has said as far as it should have been um, like Youngkin, you know, I can see that because Youngkin just the appearance wise, visual wise, he looks presidential, right? He's a freaking 6'9", clean cut guy. 6'9". <laughs> has so many, yeah, I actually found out he's like 6'9", because, you know, you think he played college basketball. Dude, no, he's, you know, he's, he's closer to 6'5". But, uh, six, oh, 6'5"? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm fi- I'm 5'8", so that's 6'9 in my book. So, <laughs> <All right. laughs> so look, Mar- Marcus, me, me and you, we, we about the same height, brothers. Like, 6'5 is 6'9 yeah. in our book. Um but you know he he approaches as like okay a clean cut ooh respectable guy I you know I, I can always you know talk with this guy I mean hell that's what helped him within the election is like okay yeah he's a newcomer but huh, Democrats was like eh, I can you know I give this guy a chance we, he's he doesn't seem like a Trumper because he never had Trump speak at his uh uh his campaigns but he was always a Trump you know a Trump fan just you know he more of the calmer you know one so i do think he would have been a better uh pick but do i think it would have been as of a momentum builder like jd vance i just i don't see i don't see that between between the two in my in my opinion i don't see as possibly not so much a big swell of momentum as much as not as much dislikables which there is with jd which creates a weight on the trump campaign coupled with the rising kamala campaign Mm-hmm. You don't want both happening at the same time. And mm-hmm. Youngkin maybe would have blunted what is seen as a negativity aspect that JD brings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very true. Very true. Um, yeah. Okay. So, okay. We, we talk about JD Vance. Now let's talk about Tim Waltz. Uh, Tim Waltz, uh, governor of Minnesota, uh, you know, uh, veteran served served our country for 20 20 plus years i think it was 24 to be exact um coach educator uh what's your take i'll start off with you conrad uh what was your take on the tim waltz uh pick for uh camilla harris i Kamala was harris, excuse me i was hoping for him i know uh shapiro um was like the biggest name to get but mm-hmm. i'm you know particularly strong in my chest strong against what's going on and the Middle East right now. And mm-hmm. because of that, Shapiro has seemed to be a little bit too supportive to Israel when in a time it's not needed to be. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, I don't want him because I think that that's going to really generate that uncommitted vote that you saw pretty heavily in Michigan. And that's the mm-hmm. type of stuff that might actually bring down the Democrat ticket further than what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I hear more and more about this wall sky. I see his record is particularly good on a state level in terms of things that Democrats like, like uh, free and universal school lunches, mm-hmm. uh, paid leave, um, all these type of things that are economically populist on a Democrat level that he was able to do uh, with only a one seat majority in the legislature in Minnesota. And like, is that the type of thing that you could then make a national? If that's true, then you can like, really create an upswell of economic populism on the Democrat side, Mm -hmm. um, which needed to happen because at some point Biden was going to not maybe be pushed out as opposed to be dropped out. And he ended up dropping out via being pushed out. And then (laughs) you see that momentum rise because of Kamala, but it, it just sort of shores up the whole sphere, the whole voting block as you would want, because Walsh, does what you want Democrats to do. Mm -hmm. He's a proof that the model works. And when you listen to him speak, I think people seem to like him more than JD on 
TV or something like that. You would see Absolutely. a greater speeches, um, greater res response from the crowd at Walsh than you would get at advanced thing. And he was just speaking to some unions and he seemed particularly fired up. And like, this seems like the union Democrat stuff of old mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Re refurbished. And this just means that the whole ticket feels better than what it did before. Absolutely. Mar Marcus, what, how, how would you, what was your thoughts on the, the Tim Waltz pick for, uh, for Kamala Harris, as far as for VP, what was your, what's your grade? What was your thoughts going? Um, I wasn't really paying attention to him until the night before um, he got picked. Um, I liked uh, Senator Mark Kelly from Arizona, but as far as, uh, but, but on Tim Waltz specifically, when I watched a couple of his interviews before and I really mm -hmm. watched him the night before, um, I liked him. You know, mm -hmm. I do like him. He feels like a vice president. He feels like someone, as in politics, they say you want to have a beer with. And uh, yeah, he he feels like, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. I think, I don't know if they were going for this, but he makes me think of what we think Joe Biden might have been like 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, and again, we know what Joe Biden was 20 years ago. Right. But mm -hmm. um, and and but he's a kind of like just a softer Joe Biden without the hard nose, you mm -hmm. know, um, like, yeah, we always knew Joe Biden would push the red button if it came to that, you know. But um, but I think Tim Watts gives a little bit of a softer feel than Joe Biden. And he really he looks like he could be Joe Biden's little brother. So I don't know if they were going for that look, but if they were, they got it. I would definitely give the Democrats an A plus on finding somebody that is very relatable to the average voters. And I mean, yeah. you're talking about a guy that is doesn't own doesn't have a, a home in his name. He does he doesn't own any property, no stocks. Um, he is a uh, 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 an educator. I've mm -hmm. mentioned before, you know, he he served the country. He was a was a, was a uh, like a high school to school teacher and then a high school uh, football coach. I mean, everything born in Nebraska, became a governor in Minnesota, which was never really looked upon as a blue state. And Even it was Reagan majority. couldn't win it. I mean, look at that. And now you have a guy with and he's very respected, really, on both sides. Of um, I, I'm not I'm forgetting his name, but I think he was a former uh, either senator or governor of Minnesota, and he just you know he he couldn't say anything bad about Jesse uh, Ventura. Walter. Yeah, oh that well yes well well now I, Jesse he's vote he's uh, gonna be supporting uh, Harris. I did see that mm -hmm. uh, recent um uh, WWE Hall of Famer turned governor of Minnesota, uh, independent. I think he was their first independent uh, governor at the time. He was he wasn't mm -hmm. you know party affiliate at all. Um, but yeah, Walsh is just very, very relatable. So I think between the two, yes, Walsh wins in, in that. And I mean, he, the first thing he said was like, okay, look, I went to, to this school or I went here and, you know, my opponent went to, uh, Yale and he was, you know, he, his career was basically funded by these big wigs. And now he wrote a book of trash in his hometown. Like, I mean, I'm like, Whoa, you found a trash talker too. That's what you need. Because a lot of Democrats that I've spoken with is like, Look, I'm tired of being a part of a party that is the party of weak. Like I'm tired of always yeah. getting the 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 bashing towards us and no response, right? So I think he's a great um, you know, back if someone wants to back and forth with him, you can't like he's he's quick on the jokes, he's quick on the shade. Um he, again, sharp re really a, sh a sharp individual, sharp pick. Um and I think it's good for them. Uh look, I want I want to move on and discuss uh discuss the um oh lord uh what am i i'm losing my train of thought i want to discuss more on the race as far as what is hurting the democrats because as i mentioned in the beginning of the show the democrats has a like a, a good momentum right now ever since uh former well not former current president joe biden dropped off the race dropped off the race and then he had endorsed uh kamala harris their their numbers is slowly but surely climbing up i think the last time i saw she was at like 47 percent and i think trump was at like 45 and some change so which is which is good for them but i still feel as though they they could do a lot better 
Um, Conrad, I'll ask, you know, I'll I'll start with you. What do you what do you think the Democratic the Democrats in general, what what's hurting them right now? What what can they improve in uh within their say their strategy or in their you know with their campaign? To be as objective as possible, knowing that um, I am a Democrat, Democrat voter. Mm-hmm. And right now we feel the best we have all year. So what are you going to say is hurting us? Well, in many ways, it's still the same thing that was hurting Biden in the mm-hmm. sense that when he was running in the primaries and we all knew he was going to win it, you still see like the Michigan primary you have a 10 percent to 15 percent uncommitted vote. Mm-hmm. And this is a, a swell of people who would be pretty strident Democrat voters who aren't going to go to Trump. Mm-hmm. They might not even go to a third party. They just won't vote for the national ticket on the presidential race. They might stay in and go uh, vote for their senator or their congressperson, but they won't vote for the presidency. And that was concerning enough that when you add that to the fact that we saw a calamity in a national debate with uh, Joe Biden, you had to get him replaced. But that thing the uncommitted vote was, was based on Middle East foreign policy. And that's still happening, even though Kamala is sounding better than Biden was on mm-hmm. the topic. The policy isn't really changing. So if more people see things like the news of having bombing after bombing after bombing over the next couple of weeks, that might be re-energized into another. Um, look, I, I really like Kamala compared to Trump, but I can't stomach voting for her because I don't like what they are currently the administration mm. is doing. That's what I think is like the biggest tailwind ahead of the Democrats right now is how we're handling foreign policy. And I think yeah. the second best is when you try to go back and think the last time Kamala ran nationally, she was the first one out of the primary mm. because even someone like Tulsi was able to just flick her right off the debate stage <laughs> about her um, history in California, and that hasn't disappeared. Um, so all that you need is just bring that right back up. If Marcus was running the campaign, he would highlight pretty much everything Tulsi said and then recycle it. Uh, but yeah. right now, we don't feel that because we feel like we're on a big roller coaster going back up. Well, you, and you know what? And before I go, get to you, Marcus, man, I got to respond to because you I mean, you're absolutely right, Conrad, as far as those points that turn, you know, voters away from. Uh, Kamala Harris, but I always get frustrated when they bring up the whole back when she was a, a DA um, in California. I'm I I clear I asked him the question, what do you think her job was to do? Like I mean, I'm just saying she was hired to arrest people that was breaking the law at that time. She is she has super, but she has bosses that she has to. She still had a job at, at the end of the day, and throughout that time, she was. It, at a position where maybe not a lot of women nor a lot of women of color was at that position right so mm-hmm. if she if they're coming after her saying she locked and i say they because it's majority black people that will say oh she locked up these many uh black men due to small crimes look it sucks let's be honest it sucks but that doesn't mean she was a fan of doing what she had to do but that was her job so again i'm like for to to come after her with that that happened probably 20 years ago um, I just I think that's kind of like, uh, okay. What's your other What's your other reason? Now I remember when she dropped out the race, uh, and like you said on the debate stage between her and Tulsi, uh, and and the others, uh, Carmela Car- Carmela Harris wasn't really holding her own, but she also dropped out too because she wasn't getting the funds. Which I mean, again, yeah. that leads to how you do on the stage. That's not true now. She is getting all the funds now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the most funds we've ever seen in 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 a long time, as far as for a democratic uh, uh, a democratic candidate. Um, Marcus, as a strategist, what do you see that Democrats are doing wrong at the moment right now? And because we're we're getting really close to you know November fifth, what are they doing wrong right now that you know they could say, hey, look, if you do this, this can really help you guys out. Um, Democrats, and it's so funny, I thought about this the other day, and I had a conversation this morning with a young Black single mom. She's 29. Um, She's a social media influencer, um, and uh, she's a veteran, right? So we're not talking about some 19-year-old single mom who's still learning the ropes of life, right? We're talking about a 
a bona fide veteran. She, you know, was a registered voter. She's two kids. Uh, very, you know, and again, social media, all of that. So check, 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 right? Checks on the boxes. And she's not enthusiastic. Mm. She's not voting for Trump at all. But she's not excited about Harris at all. What's the, what's the reasons? Partially because of just what, what you and Conrad said. Now, granted, I look at it like this. I understand that I know there's a lot that I don't know. And I understand that I will never understand. And I don't want to understand the complexities of the justice system. I don't want to know how hard it was for her. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to say what she did was right. I'm not going to say what she did was wrong. What I am going to say is, one, yes, I'm a Tulsi Gabbard fan, um, but um, unashamedly, I don't care. I think Tulsi would be a very good president. But um, when she brought that out in the in the debate, my issue wasn't just the one, Tulsi nailed that point, right? Um, but on the flip side, what the problem was for me and, is that at the time, Senator Harris, and this sounds really bad, so I got to preface by saying, one, I voted for women. I've had several, you know, political women as clients. Um, I I don't mind and have voted for for women for president, governor, mayor, so on. Mm -hmm. Harris's response when told, when Congresswoman Gabbard brought that out wasn't good. You know, it's not fair that women have a double standard. It's not. Mm -hmm. But they do. It's not fair that black women have another double standard. It's not fair, but yeah. they do. And so her response and her body language, and she did. Unfortunately, and this sounds really bad to say. I'm trying not to say it, but I have to. She popped her neck and rolled her eyes. You can't do that on the on the world stage. Mm -hmm. You can't. If you look at how she was then, and even her first year or two as vice president compared to now. She has clearly gone through, and rightfully so, and I, I think it's a sign of growth and there's nothing wrong with it. She's gone through some type of training and coaching that has minimized her her mannerisms, mm -hmm. her cadence, and her tone. Um, and I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. Um, I think she I think she comes across way better than she ever has before, so that's fantastic. But Democrats are too busy being energized and excited, but they are not engaging the people that they want. The difference is, it's one thing when, when you're ex, when you're energized, mm -hmm. like if we were talking about the, the gym earlier, you can have all the energy in the world, but if you're, if you don't, if you're not working out right, if you're just running on a treadmill all day, mm -hmm. you know, even the track athletes and for the Olympics, they still worked upper body. You know, so being energized and being excited is not enough. Mm. And whether she, whether what she did was right or wrong, she still has to educate the voting public on why. Um, I remember watching a news interview. So yeah, she she was and she wasn't getting the money when she was running. She was getting it, but she was burning through it. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. couldn't come to an agreement whether or not she had to address like what Conrad was mentioning. Um, I think it was her cousin or someone was really high in the campaign and two of them kept butting heads as far as, are we going to address this or are we not? And they were just, so, but they're, 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 they're just excited. Trump's voters are not just excited. They're educated on who he is. And even the ones that don't like him are still going to vote for him because they still have their own reasons. Whether it's race, whether it's the economy, whether it's they still have their reasons. Well, I, I definitely would, you know, not to cut you off, Marcus, but I would give credit to Republic, the Republican Party. They're ride or dies. Like literally, they they are ride or dies regardless. I feel as though on the Democratic side, if if an allegation is made before proof is even proven, you already turn like um uh Al Franken. Um, I think he was a former senator. I mean, they pushed him to the side like too quick, and I'm just like, whoa, he was whoa, whoa, canceled. canceled. And I mean, there's been so many prominent voices of the liberal part of the liberal side that says, mm, 
he would have been a great. I mean, I'm just saying, like, there. I Is never that liked me? that certain strategy. Now, uh, one thing I haven't heard any of you guys uh, bring up as far as um for for the Democrats to do is I'm seeing a lot of this on the news. No press conference, right? She she hasn't talked to the press. She's doing rallies. She's doing this, but she's not doing uh press conferences. To me, I'm like, well, what's the issue? Because if I if you go back to when they had the Republican primaries, Trump did not participate at all in any debate. Why? Because he was already he was already winning. Now, mine mm -hmm. it was a much farther uh, a stretch for him than it is now for uh, Kamala Harris with this, but still, they were winning. So she still interacting with voters she's just not talking to the press and in my opinion press shouldn't uh affect am i gonna win or not right it's it's the voters mm -hmm. uh do you uh comrade do you think it will benefit kamala harris to speak to the press especially at this timing that we have because it's it, you know november 5th will be here before you know it it could help but i don't think she needs it uh, in much the same way that uh, Trump has always been a big fan of doing the rallies himself, but you see him doing a lot more press conferences now than he was in terms of rallies even recently. Right, would you call him press conferences, man? I don't know, but I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't catch off. Uh, well, I didn't watch him, um, but I do know that um, I think he had one in Mar-a-Lago today. He had one last week or something like that, and they each had their own memeable moments with the things that he said. The, the trick is that it's a press conference. It's not him in a large field in front of thousands of people as much. And I, I have heard that this might be his campaign strategy catching up to him is that uh, he's not really getting into a lot of places that want to have him because he, he stiffs them in mm. terms of rentals. And he, maybe he's not having as much campaign funds as he needs because he also has his legal bills. So he's not campaigning out in public as much. So he resorts to doing, um, press conferences instead. Mm -hmm. That way he can always get his face out there. And the reverse seems to be true for Kamala, where she can now do a lot of the big crowds, travel all over the place, mm -hmm. which considering her role as the vice president anyway, she could have always have been doing this because there's not much political role besides breaking a tie in the Senate with the vice president. So she was free to always do this. And that's where the momentum will be for her, at least for the foreseeable future, is just make it seem like she's a bigger and bigger movement mm -hmm. that we haven't seen on the Democrat side since not 12 Obama, but 08 Obama. Okay. Okay. Uh, any, any, uh, anything you want to add to that, uh, Marcus, as far as, uh, uh, for Kamala Harris speaking with the press as, you know, as a strategist, what, what would you recommend to say for, you know, for your client, if they're, if they're running for office, what's some of your, you know, not trying to give all your tricks, but you know, is that is that an important you know thing to do? Well, well, it's it's always important. However, um, when the press is already putting out good stuff about you, let them put out good stuff about you. Mm -hmm. You know, um, because if she says something to the camera, then that's going to be the news. Mm -hmm. Versus the rally was so big and. You know, this is what her speech was. Yeah, if the speech has already been scored and it's safe and it's on message, let them cover that. Absolutely, you're both right. Okay, okay. Uh, so let me. I'm gonna move on to the Republican side as far as like what is their you know pro, the pros and cons. What's helping them and what's not helping them. Uh, we're gonna do a quick commercial break, but before I do that, I wanted to play this soundbite for the listeners, the viewers out there. I've played it before here on the um here on the show and this is just giving you kind of a background of the difference between two both rallies right uh mm -hmm. the the atmosphere the sizes the energy uh let me see if i can bring that up for you guys give me one second here we go let me see if i can get this going we believe in freedom do we believe in opportunity do we believe in the promise of America? Kamala Harris, you know, it's interesting. Nobody really knows her last name. If you ask people, do you know what her last name is? Nobody has any idea what it is. Harris, it's like Harris. All the things that make me mad about those other guys, the one thing that I will not forgive them for is they're trying to steal the joy from this country. Our next president brings the joy. She emanates the joy. I don't even know who head of our country is who do we have are we dealing with biden biden probably should get out 
but she should get out also. I think they should both get out. I will take on big corporations that engage in illegal price gouging. I will take on corporate landlords that unfairly raise rents on working families. And then he said, you know, I think J.D. Vance is weird. You know, it's a word that they use. I think he calls me that, too. No, we're not. We're, we're very solid people. <laughs> you know, he wanted to debate. If we didn't have a debate, he'd still be there. Can you imagine if we didn't have a debate? Why the hell did I debate him? Do we so I wanted to I wanted to play that uh video before we uh <laughs> we we move forward to you know speak on okay what's hurting the republicans right now and what do they need to help you know gang voters what comrade were you about to say something I, oh i was thinking of something i wanted to let you finish but oh no well, well go go ahead boss go ahead uh i love stand-up comedy um i love going out to the funny bone and by that i mean i've been there enough and i've seen people come back mm -hmm. and for instance, um, I've seen a couple of um, stand-up comics who bring the same material that I saw them do the last time. And it's not going to hit the same way when you watch it a second time live. Um, I'm getting that sort of impression with Trump now. That he, sort of, he seems like this is old now. So the vibes, have they've taken some of the teeth out of it. And you see the teeth be right back in with the Democrats. They seem a lot more... Beyond, it's the energy Marcus spoke of, but it seems like, as Wall said, the joy. People like thinking about happy things and that we're going to do things that are good for us, that makes us happy type of things that just makes the spirit a lot better for seemingly right now. The Democrat Party, and remember the last time we were on, we thought mail the race in, it was already over because we had just had um, the uh, assassination attempt on Trump's life. And we were like, that, that's it. There's no more race anymore. And then, mm -hmm. I don't feel that now. I, I, it's not even a full month. And then we have a completely different race. Mm. Marcus, what, what do you see that's hurting Republicans right now in this presidential race? What, what is what is like? Again, and I'm always going to add, as a, as a strategist, what is you know the first couple of things that come up to mind that's re that's not helping them at all? Well, they don't have any new ideas. Like they don't have anything, like make America great again and MAGA. You know, no, it wasn't a new idea, but it was a new brand. Mm -hmm. You know, like they every campaign has T-shirts, but literally MAGA is a brand. You know. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like it's, but like Conrad said, and perfectly put, um, the joke isn't the same the second time around, you know? Um, and even it is, you know, yeah, you might still, you might go from laughing to chuckling and then to giggling and then to a smirk. And when I mean, it gets old real fast, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's, they 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 don't have a brand this time. It's just Trump, you he, know. And he's hurting. He's hurting. Oh, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, he's no, really brought in the the victimhood mentality now. When was the last time you heard the phrase "lawfare"? It seems to have been coined this year in the sense that the legal apparatus is going against Trump. And then I'm reminded of the greater Republican ethos has seemingly been when they defend their voting records against, say, expanding the welfare state, social welfare programs, is that we don't like encouraging the victim mentality mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. people. And name a bigger victim than Donald Trump right now. Well, you you know what? You're absolutely, you're absolutely right, because <laughs> I'm not going to lie. When Trump gets to talking, I like at first I was disgusted when he first like was running for pre like his like in the beginning and now i just can't stop i can't stop laughing man i mean don't get me wrong some of his jokes he hits he hits i'll give I, look he hits on some of those jokes but it's just like where did they come from like harris did anybody even know her last night like i mean it's just i can't help but laugh like is this dude really sick like when he was at the nabj i couldn't stop laughing because i'm like this is wild like this i can't i just this man literally just said First she was Indian, and then all of a sudden she's black. I didn't, you know, in, in front of a room 
of black journalists, yep. all black journalists. And I'm just like, this dude is wild. So I, I say all that to say, because I've spoken with a, a, you know my uh, conservative friends, and I told them clear as day, the personal attacks are not accomplishing. Like, he needs to eat. When is he ever going to talk policy? But that's the thing. He can't, nor can his VP can add to, you know, can kind of help him in the, cause he don't even know policy. He's, he's new at it. Right. So it's like, what is, what does he know? Um, but what, what I do see that is helping them is again, you bring up the border, you bring up cost of living, like cost of living is literally the top on a lot of people's platform. Now you do have the group of individuals that says, look, it is important, but don't you care more about democracy and, you know, in peace rather than just your pockets and it still it still is a toss-up right it still is a toss-up and i think that's what's been hurting the the democrats because mm, i don't think they have spoken a lot at least at rallies uh what what we're gonna do what costs right what, what's gonna happen with the um on, on the on the uh cost side and so uh it's just i don't, I don't know if, uh marcus what 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 is helping uh republicans at this at this point i feel like i've kind of shared something but what what do you think is helping republicans and that's could they could if they keep on using that they can you know possibly change the format and change the uh the i guess the polling in a sense well democrats are helping republicans but again because again they're 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 energized but they're not really engaged with making sure like trump activates the fringes mm -hmm. democrats don't have the I, they have the progressives excited. I don't know if they're convinced to actually come out of it, but we'll see. But what's what's um, you're asking what's what's helping them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, is that, that victim mentality that that Conrad was talking about. A lot of a lot of people, regardless of political spectrum, but especially a lot of blue collar, you know, suburb, a lot of families struggling from inflation or for whatever reason they feel like they're the victim, you know? And it's hard, it's, it's easy for anyone to feel that way. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I, I played by the rules. I've done the right thing. I've, you know, got all A's and B's. I've, you know, I, I was fair. I was good to my fellow man. I went to church on Sunday. I sang in the choir. So, and I still so it's more the mistreated group. It's more the ones that yeah. feel mistreated and just like, wow, like. Yeah, and so it's, it's it's sad because one, everyone feels like that sometimes. Mm. And the other thing that's helping them is, is that there's a lot of people who are angry, you know, for whatever reason, especially angry at life and society and everyone, you know, we, we want everyone to be their best selves, right? Mm. To be, to be, you know, guys have to be gentlemen and women have to be ladies. Um, but on the progressive on the democratic side, you can live your truth, right? Live your truth. But there's some people who are frustrated that they can't just, you know, you know what I think? They're, 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 okay, let me put it this way. There are a lot of conservatives or moderates, whoever, mm -hmm. who, for instance, some people don't mind addressing the queer community as that. And then you have some people that I'm real sick and tired. I always have I have to come to work. I'm just here to work, but I have to or the LGBTQ this and you stuff. You know, men should be men and women. And they're frustrated and they're tired of having to dance on pins and needles. And Trump is allowed to go out there and just say whatever he wants. You can't do that at work. You can't do that at church. You can't do that when you go see your family. Mm -hmm. You can't do that when you're walking around Kroger or Food Lion, you know, and you see stuff that bothers you. You know, you see someone with a teenager with green hair and you want to be, oh, see, that's not the way it's supposed to be. People are <laughs> mad and they're tired of having to fit into this box. You know, they can't express themselves, but Trump can. That's attractive for a lot of people. Yeah, and, and I hear you, but I, I also see as that being his like his kryptonite as well, because then you start leaning towards, OK, so let's talk about the brand Make America Great Again. A lot of people have said, OK, great again. I mean, 
you really you build by moving forward. So you're what you're saying is we need to make America great again. Let's go backwards on how it used to be when a lot of people are saying, hold up, time out. What does that mean? Let's talk about that. So for those who might say, look, I don't like this new new age stuff. I don't like that. Look, you at the end of the day, it's about moving forward. You can't keep it to your you can't keep it to your old school. So like if I want to move it forward, I wouldn't uh, of uh, I don't know, like technology, I guess, wouldn't be because I'm not that good at, at, at technology. Right. Or or uh, I don't know. We I'm trying to think of some other stuff, streaming or whatever. It's just like a lot of people don't want to pursue the and I hear and I hear what you're saying, Marcus, because there is a huge base that that love that about uh, uh Donald Trump and that and that's they they're his ride or dies. But then you you do see people that attend the the comedy shows of Donald Trump and they're like, oh I've heard that a lot and I'm getting a little this is getting a little old, right? So now you start seeing former Trump supporters saying, you know what? I was wrong. Let me lean more towards and that kind of uh, brings me a little bit, which I, I know we're, we're running a little short on time, so I'll try and breeze through some of these um, stories pretty quickly. So, like, Kamala Harris has multiple groups. She has Blacks for Harris. She has Republicans for Harris. She has evangelists, uh, e- evangelists for Harris. And one prominent voice in the evangelist movement, Franklin Graham, son of Billy Graham, uh, who is a strong uh, Trump supporter, he's, uh, you know, he's frustrated with evangelists even, you know, voting for Harris. But at the end of the day, it's like, like what Trump is a problematic individual. Nowhere in my in, in, in God's green earth did what I say, mm, uh, I need to learn about Jesus. Let me talk with Donald Trump and he can teach me. You know what I mean? Like it's just like, no, no. So I, I, I I'm I'm kind of rambling off, but uh with all the groups that are now starting for Kamala Harris, guys, does this look like a repeat from say uh uh the momentum of when Obama was first into office because you're starting to see a lot of groups uh start you know uh white women for Kamala Harris uh white men for I mean it's like whoa what's happening uh Marcus I'll start with I'll start with you with all these different groups and campaign organizations uh what is the message the narrative that you think that it's spreading within um you know just within our country right now you know just Again, they're excited. Um, it looks, it can almost look like um, it did with with President Obama in 2008. I mean, the massive excitement. Mm-hmm. But again, it's still different because you had more time to see if people are going to actually be engaged. Are they going to actually go out there and do stuff? You know, Zoom is easy, right? Knocking on a hundred doors is hard in Iowa and New Hampshire and Massachusetts and, you know, states that you know you can't win in the general, but you're trying to win in the press. That's different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm sorry. I probably lost, lost the question. There Cause I just, I, I mean, oh, no, 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 no. It, it was, it was, it was mainly just, you know, just on, just on the narrative that is, that is bringing up. You have a lot of, you know, groups, like I said, Republicans for Harris, which the last time I, at least I remember seeing Republicans supporting a Democratic ticket was again, the Lincoln project when that was first established. So, well, um, so I don't, I'm, I'm glad you said that again. Mm-hmm. Republicans for Harris, I think is great. Now, saying this as a political consultant who's worked across the aisle, I Mm -hmm. know full well that it's one thing when a former elected Republican um, or even, you know, the mayor over in um, Arizona, uh, Mm -hmm. that's that's that that's endorsed her. I'm curious to see if Democrats are really going to make this a thing, you know, like it's cute to say Republicans for Harris. Mm-hmm. But are you going to actually put them out here on the stump? <laughs> you know, how much respect is the party going to give these Republican, you know, for, you know, Chuck Hagel, mm-hmm. you know, or the former governor, I mean, the former, former lieutenant governor out of Georgia. I mean, he's endorsing, um, uh, endorsing Harris. So, yeah. So like, are you going to put him up on a stage and does he want to go, mm-hmm. you know? Because again, you this is one of those cases where you either put up or shut up. When people were excited about President Obama, they were ready to go. You couldn't stop them. Mm-hmm. It's totally different to be on a screen and just say, she has my support. Oh, I bet she does. 
<laughs> I, I but you know what? Does. I think I think I think it's a sm- I think it will be smart of them to do so because again, like myself, I'm an independent, right? I I'm not a fan of the whole you know separation with you know within the the party system. I think that's a growth. That's like I'm seeing the growth in people coming together for the greater good, right? So I would I would encourage the Democrats to be like, okay, no, we we can obviously we can work together, we can do this, we can do that, and not be that part like, nope, mm-mm, mm-mm, I can't do it. You have a what? A R? Oh my gosh, it, such and such got an R in front of his name. I can't talk. You know, what I mean, I, it's just it's kind of it's childish, especially when majority of the voters out here they are independents, right? You got the undecided votes that still in, that still exists, and um, yeah, I mean, Connor, what, what, what do you what do you think about that? Uh, well, first off, I think a lot of the momentum that we've seen of the Harris campaign has been a lot of those independents who finally realized that they could break from being an independent because they didn't like Biden so much and could come over to the Harris side. Um, I did some notes in advance for mm-hmm. today, um, and it was really looking at some of the swing states um, compared to May and compared to now. And Harris is leading now in Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, Arizona, even North Carolina. And it's down in Nevada, but she closed a lot of the gap. And this is mainly because there were so many people that were undecided. Mm-hmm. Now that they're a little bit more decided, but they went to what probably would have been a Democrat home anyway. I'm not entirely sure if something like evangelists for Harris or Republicans for Harris is something that the Democrats would really even want to try to flaunt. Because what that might do is put another weight in the bag of... Um, reasons Democrats want to vote Democrat. Mm, because mm. if you put Republicans for Harris and give them a big stump, what are the policies that they might talk about? Because they're, they're not going to mirror what Harris is. Mm-hmm. Is there still Republicans? This would be the same thing for, there had been Democrats for Trump too over the past eight years. But again, how many of those Democrats for Trump are actually going to support a lot of Trump's policies? So that wouldn't be something that the Republicans would want to flaunt. We have the party system because we have sizable chunks of the country that are decidedly Democrat and Republican. So if you work too much with the other side, you're going to spurn your own side. I like that. I like that. And look, guys, we are running. We're running a little low on time. But if it's OK with you all, I would like to continue this conversation. If I can get 10 minutes of your time, if uh, finishing this conversation on Instagram live, if that's OK with you, too. Um, and I will uh, con- contact you all because it's uh, it's it's getting good, y'all. It's getting good, and it's always hard to you know to impact this all within one hour. So again, we're gonna continue this conversation, guys, on our Instagram page, the Arrington Gavin Show. So, uh, Marcus Conrad, look, I will talk. Stay, uh, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna keep you guys backstage. But again, I wanna again thank you all for taking the time out your uh, guys' busy schedule coming here on the show. But I, I would like to continue this conversation uh, in right after right after this actually on Instagram if that's okay with you too. Um, but let me go ahead and so, ladies and gents, I hope you all enjoyed that uh, uh, conversation here on the Aaron and Gavin show. This is what we do here. We we welcome people from all sides of the aisle, and we have these great, impactful conversations that benefits and that is important for you know for you, the voters, the listeners out there. And um, again, we're just not giving you the cookie cutter BS that you see in other, you know, mainstream uh, media platforms. Right. We don't have an agenda here. Our our agenda here is unbiased and just real upfront, honest talk, honest conversation. The same conversations you might have at the bar with some friends, the same conversations you might have uh, at the cookout, the family cookout. Uh, we just we just it's just a simple conversation. Um, so, again, I want to thank my guest, uh, Mr. Conrad Shez Venter, host of Shez Who. Be sure to subscribe to his channel, Shez Who, right now on YouTube, as well as follow my good friend, Mr. Uh, Marcus Calabrese, uh, political strategist. He has some great content as well. And we will have them back on uh, very soon because, again, it, it is election season. It's getting really juicy. I'm going to tell you that right now. So, my friends, y'all take care. God bless. Continue to tune to the Arrington Gavin show every evenings on all digital and streaming platforms of course every weeknights at 11 p.m on wdjy 99.1 fm straight talk all right 